Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my year-end roundup of my Foundation Friday for Over 50 series. So in 2015, I started a new series on uh, testing foundations for over 50 year old skin to see if I could find a holy grail or a number of holy grails for older people with mature skin that was less than perfect. Over the course of the year, I tested 16 different foundations and I did manage to find one holy grail foundation. There are some from the drugstore, there are some from the department store. To give you a little bit of background on my skin, I have normal to combination skin. I tend to be a little bit oily in my T-zone still. So things that are super shiny and super dewy, I don't tend to like. I go for more of a natural look. I'm not a real full coverage kind of person. I don't like things that contain a lot of alcohol because I do find it drying. I don't like a lot of fragrance in my foundation. So anything with like a big fragrance is probably not going to be high on the list for me. So in today's video, I'm just going to review quickly uh, every foundation that I reviewed this year from the series and rank them starting from the worst and leading up to the best. Okay, so the first one on the just didn't work for me list is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. While I did like it to wear underneath a powder foundation, I didn't like it enough on its own. It accentuated my pores and it was very shiny. As I said, I don't like things that are shiny and so I feel like the shine just accentuates my ripply skin, my orange peel skin, my pores, everything that's going wrong. I like a nice soft diffused um, radiance, but anything with like a hard shine does not work for me. It is a moisturizing foundation though and it doesn't have any alcohol so it might be fine for people with drier skin and as I said I do like it underneath the powders. Next was a super high-end product that just didn't work for me. It's the Dior Dior Skin Nude Air Serum Foundation. Now this formula had a very high alcohol content and also had a pretty strong fragrance. The good things about it were that it was easy to apply it provided good coverage of like tonal issues like redness and from a distance it actually looked pretty nice because it had a nice skin-like finish but it only lasted for a few hours. It settles into pores and wrinkles, it looked waxy and too shiny for me after a couple of hours and the last item in this category was the Makeup Forever HD Invisible Cover Foundation. It contains no sunscreen or alcohol. Now this is not the Ultra HD formula that was released earlier this year. I did this one about two weeks before that one came out. It provides sheer weightless coverage that actually looked nice if you were having a picture taken. The cons are on it are that it settles into pores and wrinkles. <laughs> Again, it had a very short wear time, it was drying, and it was also way too shiny for me. All right, let's move on to the next category, which I am calling the mixed bags, because that's what they are. They had some good points about them, they had some bad points about them. First foundation in the mixed bag category, no particular order, is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum. It has no sunscreen, but it does have quite a bit of drying alcohol and fragrance. The pros on this one are that it looks very nice when first applied, the price is great, and it offers a youthful, soft, radiant finish. The cons on this one are that it settles into wrinkles and pores, it gets shiny as the day wears on, and it had a very short wear time. So, can't really recommend that one. Next on the list was Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. This one had no sunscreen or fragrance, but it did have a high alcohol content. So the pros on this one, it has a very nice matte, but not mask-like finish temporarily. Uh, it diminishes pores temporarily. <laughs> um, it had minimal settling into wrinkles. It blends easily and offers medium to full coverage. It had very poor wear, only four hours before it starts to look bad, and it gets shiny very quickly. It did settle into wrinkles later in the day, and it did settle into pores after four hours. So while it may have looked good to start as the day wore on, I was wearing like a aging, drying mask of makeup. 
All right, also from the drugstore, we have Rimmel Lasting Finish. The pros on this one are that it has a very low alcohol and fragrance content. It offers medium to full coverage. It has a flattering diffused glow for the finish, and it doesn't settle into pores. The cons are that it's kind of heavy to wear. It's slightly drying. It accentuates wrinkles. It needs primer and mattifying setting powder. For it to last all day. This is one of the ones that I did get a compliment on, so it does have like a certain something about it. Next in the mixed bag list is another one from the drugstore. It was L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte. This has no sunscreen, no fragrance, no alcohol. It looked quite nice for the first five to six hours. It was nice on the pores. It gave a demi-matte finish. So the cons were that sadly it dried out my skin. It magnified my wrinkles. It made them look bigger and deeper. And it can be difficult to apply and it felt heavy and had a tendency to look a little mask-like. Not really my cup of tea. If you're a full coverage person and you have skin more on the oily side, this could really be a great drugstore foundation for you. All right, and here are the more high-end foundations that were in the mix bag. The first one is the Jane Iredale Pure Pressed Base. It's really good on its own for a few hours. It was really easy to apply. It gave um, great coverage, really nice evening out of the skin tone. It didn't settle into wrinkles. Unfortunately, after four hours, it was very, very shiny, and you need to keep repowdering over it. I found it to be a little bit drying, and it had a short wear time. Next in that mixed bag is the Cover Effects Pressed Mineral Foundation. This one was best over tinted primer, but unfortunately, I couldn't figure out a way to use it on its own. It did settle into pores, it was hard to blend, it had a short wear time, it does settle into wrinkles. And the last foundation that is in the mixed bag is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation Plus concealer. This is fragrance and alcohol free. It provides good coverage. It had a certain something about it, but for me, the cons outweighed the pros. It was shiny. It felt heavy to wear. It looked mask-like. I felt like I looked like an escapee from the wax museum. It did settle into pores and wrinkles, and it just made all my skin's flaws stand out. It actually looked good on the video, but any closer than two feet, you could see where everything was going wrong with it. All right, I've got two more categories before we get to the Holy Grail. This one I'm calling the pretty good. They were just a couple of things that were deal breakers for me, but they could work really well for other people. So the first one in this category is the Temp2 Air. The Temp2 Air people offered me a product uh, to try, and they also offered me two to give away. The pros on this one were that it is very easy to use. It smooths over pores and wrinkles. It's one of those ones that does have a certain something. It has that really youthful look, and if you like a really luminous um, foundation that just smooths everything over, this is like the one for you. It's not drying. If you have dry skin, it's really good for dry skin. So there's a lot to recommend here. The cons on it though are that there is a bit of a learning curve and it is an investment and that the foundation itself is very, very luminous. It's got a very shiny finish and it also is a little bit tacky. It doesn't really dry down completely throughout the day. The next one in the pretty good is the Guerlain Lingerie de Peau. It has a very youthful, flattering finish about it. It didn't settle into pores and it was almost foolproof to apply. Unfortunately, it does settle into wrinkles and the wear time was very, very short on its own. If you added a primer and a setting powder and a setting spray, you could get it to last, but at $63, I would not want to have to spend another $100 in products just to get it to last. It had a high alcohol content and a really strong fragrance, which were deal breakers for me. Now we'll move into the category right below Holy Grail, which I'm calling the best. Two products made it into the best of the bunch. The first one is the Becca Perfect Skin Mineral Powder Foundation. This is like my go-to everyday foundation. As you can see, I've hit pan on it. The pros on this one are that it's a mineral powder, so it's really, really good for your skin, especially if you have sensitive skin or rosacea or are acne prone, which I am. It's easy to apply. It has a lovely skin-like finish. It almost gives that kind of lit from within, very soft, very diffused glow. It's not flat. It's not overly matte. It doesn't settle into pores or wrinkles. It actually smooths the pores slightly. It looks very natural. It's long-wearing, and it's non-drying. 
The cons on this one are that if you apply it too heavily, it can look a little bit heavy and cakey. I prefer this over a tinted moisturizer, that's how I wear it normally, but in a pinch I am perfectly happy to wear it just on its own as is and it still looks great. The other foundation that made it into the category of the best is Too Faced Born This Way. This one made a huge splash when it came out. The pros on this one are its natural youthful look. This is a moisturizing formula so it doesn't cling to dry patches and it's good for people with dry skin. It's long wearing, it's weightless and comfortable to wear, and it has very little alcohol and no fragrance. Unfortunately, it's very shiny on its own and it settles into pores and wrinkles. Fortunately, those three things can be remedied by throwing other products at it. So if you add primer and setting powder, it doesn't do those things. So with the addition of two additional products, if you have the money for that, it didn't settle into pores, it didn't settle into wrinkles, and it didn't get shiny. So from that standpoint, it could look very good as long as you didn't use it all by itself. All right, so a lot of you know what the Holy Grail is, but let's move right into the Holy Grail, which is my Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. It does contain a little bit of alcohol, but fortunately it was low enough on the list of ingredients that it's probably not gonna be super drying, although if you already have dry skin, this might not be the foundation for you, but for me, it was not a deal breaker because it was so good in every other way. It does have a fragrance as well, but it's weird, I could never smell it. It's a very, very light fragrance. The pros on this one, I can put it on with my fingers. <laughs> it's easy to blend. It covers up my redness and all my imperfections and doesn't need primer. It's very natural looking. It um, doesn't settle into wrinkles. It doesn't settle into pores. It improves the look of older skin in a natural way that's neither dry looking or overly dewy. It's just right in the middle. It just gives that perfect little lit from within glow that is so youthful looking. It's long wearing. There is a con with it though, and fortunately for me, this is not a deal breaker. It did not play well with my favorite sunscreen, which is a silicone-based sunscreen. So I did have to switch up my sunscreen and find a water-based sunscreen to wear with it. So I did swap in this Elta MD UV Physical 41 sunscreen. So it makes my aging skin look better than it is. I love it. I wear it almost every day. I can't say enough good things about it. So that is the whole wrap up of the year in foundations. So stay tuned with me in 2016 for more Foundation Fridays. I think the first three that I'm going to try in 2016 were the winners from 2013. And those three are the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light, the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream, and the It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation. So I'll have those with the rigorous testing and we'll see if they really stack up. Um, they never were quite Holy Grail, but almost, and we'll see if they can achieve Holy Grail status or still maintain their place in the best of the best. I hope you enjoyed the series as much as I enjoy making it for you. I hope as always that you found the videos helpful and informative and I always thank you for your time. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. So take care. Bye-bye.